Hey everyone, Georgi here with Ukraine Matters. The situation is continuing to be quite difficult in Saladar and Bakhmut area. Uh, let me quickly jump into the map to give you an update, but there's going to be a little bit of a um, caveat to all of this. Ukrainian authorities have requested a blackout for information about Solidar and what's happening there. Obviously, as much as I love getting views and getting the all those juicy, juicy clicks and so on uh, to get attention to myself so I can sell out, obviously, and get into war profiteering if you believe the trolls. Uh, but I also respect uh, what the Ukrainian authority are requesting. So I'll give you an update on what was known before the request came in and what was kind of widespread and what we know also now that is also widespread. The situation around center of Solidar has uh, definitely been very complicated and there has been calls about the potentially that the center of Solidar might get encircled. Um, this uh, is unknown whether it happened or not, but this is something that's been uh, spreading around. So right now we know that the position uh, within Solidar is extremely difficult. You, the good news yesterday was that Ukrainians have gotten additional reinforcements into the into the area. And the biggest threat basically to the Solidar overall uh, that people were mentioning is the fact that Russians can just, uh, you know, collapse on Solidar from two sides. So my guess is uh, that the forces that are reinforcing the Solidar most probably will be helping to deal with these side attacks and maybe reinforcing some of the positions inside of the city. Uh, in any case, uh, Solidar, it's very difficult. It's very hard to say which side uh, so far is... is Well, uh, obviously, Russians are attacking, so the initiative belongs to them in Solidar. But uh, uh, it's very hard to know which way the situation went after the blackout. We have some indications, but unfortunately, I just cannot tell you about them. Uh, what we know additionally is that Pithorodne has also been captured, and this has been more or less confirmed, at least almost completely. So the situation in, in, in Solidar and Bakhmut area is, is quite tough, is quite tough. Uh, Bakhmut itself, the city is fine, and the attacks on Solidar is what matters. So, and here I want to explain, like, because yesterday I just got bombarded with about 100 million messages uh, asking people, can you explain the situation in Solidar? Can you explain where the troop movements are? Can you explain uh, what's the situation? Can you, like, make a whole video about this? And the answer to that is, is something that I've been trying to tell you quite a lot. I've been trying to tell you many, many times on this channel. The thing is that... As you can see right now on your screen, this is how you see the war. This is how you look at the war. The only thing is missing probably is the red lines. I'll just put some of the red lines. So that's, that's, and this is not actual movement. I'm just pretending. So this is how you're looking at the war. The problem is that the way I'm looking at the war is like this. So you see Kiev which is the, essentially the ultimate goals of the Russians because they need to get Zelensky out of their chair if they are to retake Ukraine. And when we're talking about the situation of Saladar, it's this. I'll, I'll put an arrow here. It's here. See? So that's... Wow, oh, what a writing. So that's the situation we are discussing. I want you to, to take a breather breathe out and take it all into the scale because Russia's plan is okay uh, let's maybe say that Russia doesn't want to take the western part of Ukraine everything that is west of the Dnipro river fine they just want to take Kiev and then they will say victory Ukraine is ours maybe they will capture Zelensky yada 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 something like this but the point is whatever Russia captures before that is not going to stop the war what we are seeing right now in Solidar is all of the mighty Russia's effort is concentrated on this particular point. And that's where the thrust is coming in and that's why it feels so hard. The point is we're looking at that point and because we're focusing on that one single point, we're thinking that this is something significant. 
I will remind you that the fact that Russians are attacking Solidar now is because they were unable to do it to a bigger target, to Bakhmut. So they tried, they failed. They said like, okay, we cannot take big city. Let's take a small one. And it's taking them over almost two weeks of attacks on Solidar. Well, actually, Solidar has been under siege for a while now, but uh, at least like this uh, massive attack. Okay, maybe one week. Let's let's take one week. So one week of full scale attacks just to get through it, and it costs countless, countless lives. So my question for you is: If this is what costs are for Russia? to take this point on the map, and it's just one point, how many of these do you think Russia can hold to get to Kyiv? How many of these will Russia need to get through? Because they are, even if they capture Solidar, it complicates things, yes. It, the situation becomes a little more, bit more difficult, yes. But will it end the war? No, the war does not end on Solidar. We are just so focused on that one point. And that's why when people say, Georgie, like Solidar, oh my God, the situation is Solidar. It is so crazy. Tell us about everything. Guys, big picture here. That's why I really like, for example, what Jake Bro is doing, that he's saying, okay, yes, it's very important to get victories on the battlefield, but like, you know, what matters in the war is like the macro. So as much as we want Ukraine to to win and dominate this uh, completely inhumane orc army, we need to understand that whatever is happening right now, it's minuscule. It's, it's just like a small place on the map that something is going on. And Ukraine is huge. And for Russians to get to Kyiv, is pretty much impossible. So that's why when we're talking about people asking me question, Georgie, you keep saying that the Russian army has lost, but like we're seeing that they're like now taking ground in Solidar and we're literally counting every hundred of meters that they're taking over three months. So when people are saying, so when I say that the Russia has lost, what I mean is that strategically, there is no way for the Russians with the way how strong Ukrainian army is and becoming stronger. I mean, tanks are coming. Uh, we already kind of more or less can say it aloud. There is serious discussion of delivery of actual main battle tanks from the West to Ukraine. That will be a big game changer. And Ukraine is becoming more and more stronger over time. The only way Russia is advancing is that they are trading bodies for hundreds of meters. And they're essentially one body a meter or something, <laughs> or even less, even more actually, just because they're piling up. Because the descriptions of pictures that we're seeing are crazy. No army can sustain itself to fight like this. Yes, they're using their thousands and thousands of prisoners to just send forward and die on Ukrainian bullets. But that's not an uh, in infinite resource as much as Russia would really want to do it. So what I want you to take away from this video, if you watched it this far, is always remember the scale. Keep your eyes on the ball. Russian army, despite losing strategically, still has a lot of power. Remember I told you about the fact that Russian army was starting to lose to Ukrainian army because they were just too few of them, because Ukrainians grinded it down and the power of Ukrainians started overpowering Russian army. And then mobilization happened and then they equalized now. And this is what we're seeing right now, more or less. Yes, Ukrainians are having some success on the Rubizhne front line with the, with the Kremlin, but Russians are having a little bit of success by uh, organizing this completely inhumane attack, sacrificing thousands of lives just to gain one small settlement. So breathe out, think about big picture, support the Ukrainian armed forces, support the people at Solidar, and we're going to get through this. It's uh, not a good position to be in because we are so invested in what's happening with people at Solidar, because 
it's it's a personal drama for a lot of us but please 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 know that ukrainian country ukrainian independence and the future of this war is not dependent on the battle of solidar thank you so much slava ukraini and i'll see you next time